How's it going everyone? Elder Gonzalez again. And in today's video we're gonna see how now all of these different pieces in the object oriented programming in JavaScript using the prototype of nature, how now makes sense when we build objects using the class keyword and extend. Why this is important? Because the vast majority of frameworks out there react angular view as well you name it express right whether it's on the front end or on the back end they all rely on the fundamental which is javascript so by knowing how javascript works behind the scenes not only look at the async nature of javascript which is something that we look uh, in a previous uh, or in a different series of videos that i have in my channel but also how now the object programming in JavaScript plays out by working with the prototype nature of the language. And now we have all of the hard parts of JavaScript together as a way to solve client problems. So this is a course taught by Will Sentence. Uh, Shout out to Will Sentens, uh, the CEO of, of Codesmiths, which is a software engineering machine learning residency headquarters in New York and California. That the idea of today's or of this course is to take a look at now how the opportunity programming allows us to write scalable applications uh, in JavaScript in a professional engineering environment. So by understanding all of these finicky details of the prototypal nature and how can we create objects and now understanding is what these new keywords uh, is that the language allow us to use provide and how this mechanism works behind the scenes and what is the end goal of this, what is the value proposition of all of this now it makes more sense uh, for us to understand all of this as a way to provide solutions to our clients, regardless of the industry. And something important here is, uh, or at least for today's video, we're going to focus is on how now can we is look at how class and the extend keyword as a way to improve our technical communications so we have much more precision when we need to solve uh, problems. And that's also part of the skill set that a lot of developers or computer science, software engineers uh, need for their career and also that companies are looking for, which is, well, your analytical skills, how is your thinking process, that's one. The other is, well, how is your technical communications? So based on your approach, can I implement can I implement it? Are you following is the good engineering practice uh, for developing these kind of applications? How about your soft skills? Now you're empathic. You now have patience with yourself and others. And lastly is but not least, the domain <clears throat> sorry, the domain specific knowledge. So for example, with JavaScript. And also uh, things that can be now uh, transferred across language. So for example, object programming in this case, or things like iterators and generators. So that's great because now it all makes sense of uh, how that works ah, sorry My bad. 
sorry. So yeah, uh, the thing here is that in this course is now looking at how we can so look at, look at the hard part of the RNT programming, okay? By looking at the storytelling process or by understanding how do we get here, uh, we will embrace the complexity. That's one of the things that I really love uh, from Brian Holt, okay? This software engineer that has previously worked at Reddit, Netflix, uh, Microsoft. He is currently the VP of engineering at uh, SQLite Cloud. And when, once he mentioned that, is that, yeah. So it's, it is important to understand how do we get here. And once you do that, you will embrace complexity. And I will argue that that star or that begin is by trying to solve your own problem. This is <laughs> uh, personal, uh, my personal uh, communication here. It's like a personal touch. All right. So the, uh, today we're going to see is now how the subclassing in class extends and super works. Okay. And we're going to walk through all of this briefly as a way to understand now how do we get here. Okay. <clears throat> So, because the object and the programming is this way of how can we organize data and it is current functionality, because this is something that computer science and computer engineers back in the 60s, they didn't have a way of how to organize that data and it is functionality, okay? And it is very hard for them to actually maintain the code base, okay? All right, now, they come up with this idea of object, object-oriented programming. So in JavaScript, the way of how can we now organize our data and get it functionality, all right, is by building objects. And the way to build those objects, you have is the template string, uh, template, uh, tem object literals, uh, object notations, object.create, which is a built-in object that provides us language as a way to set the proto, something that we're going to talk about that later, and the function object or create a object from functions. So we can is now use this particular approach, generate object using functions, where we have now our data and it is our functionality, but anytime we create this object here in JavaScript, we are duplicating is the functionality as well. And after all, we don't need to do that. We just only want is to grab the functionality, hold it in one place, and just working with the relevant data. And that's exactly, uh, for example, when you're creating objects using the object of create, allow you to do, which is known as the sophisticated way of creating objects, okay? So this sophisticated way uh, that involves is to define your function. In fact, let me actually do that briefly here. Let me do that briefly here, briefly, briefly. So we're going to build is now a user for a game, all right? So, uh, because we want to create objects uh, that we can grab it as functionality and only apply that functionality to the relevant data, that's what we use the object.create or this sophisticated way of creating objects. So we have now our function here, which is user creator, and from there, okay, Jesus. In front there, we're gonna say, all right, good, cool. Uh, let's go to create our new user, new user with the object building, uh, building objects dot create method, okay? And now this will initially create an empty object and also set the, the dunder proto dunder. What is this? All object has now 
this reference that allowed them to access to property and methods to other objects. So when we take a closer look at the object I'll create here, oh, there you got it, you got it, there you got it. The object I'll create here, okay, using an existing object as the prototype of the newly created object. The whole point of this is to allow you to have access to those functionality, right? So now this object can have access to uh, this personality of from this object, okay? Whether it's the data as well as the function, okay? It can have access to the data and it is current functionality. Well, this is the classical way of how you can achieve inheritance, okay? Uh, which I wouldn't like to call inheritance. In fact, this is a way of how you can have access to property and methods. Uh, basically, that's it is. Uh, but in any case, classical inheritance, right? So, because this particular approach here is saying, hey, what will be the object that I want you to now have access uh, that contains all of this functionality? is the cons user functions, okay? User functions. So this will be is an object when you have it, for example, increment then, which will be a function where we now want to have, have access to the proper data, okay? And the way to do that is by using is the this keyword. What allow us is to work with the proper and relevant data. So we say, hey, uh, this dot score, which is a property that we haven't defined, uh, is here. So I want you to now, once you create this empty object, get, uh, provide access through the dunder proto dunder of the user functions here. User functions here. Okay. And now, all right. So let me uh, actually. Uh, adding property or methods to this. In this case, properties, data. For example, like name. But name is something that we want to get from it is parameter, as well as the score, as well as, no, so far, so good, this. Name. And then we want is the user dot score, as well as score, all right? And then we want to return that new user object. We can also define some other functions like say, hey, um, I want now to show a login by saying, hey, this is a function where the only thing that you're gonna do is to just console log is, hey, uh, hey, you're logging, you know, hey, you are, you are log, in period hey you are logging all right cool and now when we want to create this user user one we say okay new um, user creator okay we say user creator we pass the alice as a name and the score which is seven seven we want is to now run is the user dot increment. We want is to now uh, want to know is well uh, what is the user score. And okay, now let's let's log in here to this game, right? And as you can see, actually is doing as supposed. To. So this is the way how you can create these sophisticated objects. But recently. Uh, and thanks to the uh, advancements of the language in the ES6, uh, it allow us is to say, instead of you actually having to manually set the object that you want to have access to, or do, to set this inheritance, we're gonna handle that for you. How so? By using is the new keyword. So instead of you actually having to write that uh, manual, or do instead of you do the handcrafting 
a reference that can that allow you to access to this property and methods. So what we want to do is this instead. So with the new keyword, you should write your application. You should write your objects in this way. First, defining an, a, a function, what you're going to define is your data, okay? Usually, uh, so for example, user creator. All right, you're going to receive the name as well as the score. All right, and what is going to do here behind the scenes? The new is say, I'm going to allow you. I'm going to create an, an empty object from the scratch, and I'm going to assign that to the this inside of the function. Okay. Uh, so then you can now add the proper relevant data to this, as well as the score or any other logic that you need to as a build this object, all right? Uh, and then uh, we want now is to uh, define it as functionality. All right, the way to do that is by defining then under the prototype. And prototype is part of this property that has, that all functions contain as a way to access to the object portion of the function, okay, uh, where here is when you define your methods, the proto prototype here. In our case, our reusable functionalities or functionality that we want to apply to this particular object, okay, and that is the increment, okay, function like this, that's right, you say you increment, say increment here, wait a single moment, yeah, increment here, pa, 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 pa. let's say, hey, this dot score increment, okay, followed by another uh, definition here, or another method definition, like login, which is like this, all right? You say, hey, I uh, just want to now consult the log is, uh, hey, you are lo logging. No. Hey, you're logging. All right. So this is now what it needs to define data and its functionality using the new keyword as a way to automize is the linking process, the proto uh, linking reference process. So now when we want to create our new user, let's say user one, we use this the new keyword, okay? And then we call that functions that follow that particular uh, approach. We say user one dot login, okay? And there you get it. So this is now what you're going to see in a lot of professional code bases out there as a way to create objects. So far, so good. So if you want to define some nested functionality inside of this, uh, what happened is that the value of this now change because it follows certain rules. So if you define the value of this here, instead of a function execution context, uh, it say, all right, I'm gonna, the value of this will be whatever is on the left side, assuming that they have the data. But when you nested this, uh, or when you create nested functions instead of another function, the value of this is not what you expect, all right? And sometimes you work is with the window up here or undefined. So as a way to solve that, we use is the arrow function that creates a closure around it that allows us is to access to the variable environment uh, or the lexical environment. <coughs> Sorry. 
that allow us to access to the lexical environment uh, and yeah that allow us to access to the lexical environment all right um, from the inner function so we're gonna talk about that late we're gonna we're not gonna touch that uh, because uh, that's something that you're gonna get used to that as you move on here and another important topic here is now that we talk about the scope and the this and what's going on when you define this inside of a nested function and how functions as a way to now what you want to pass is the proper value of this before the axis we have to use is the dot bind which our inner method that the function has the bind the call that apply as a way to pass is at the run times or a definition time the uh, the value of this okay to provide the proper data to that which is great and okay so then we look at as you can imagine the new keyword what is doing is to automate this process here to say hey uh, instead of actually create now this okay uh, and because you may wonder uh, what is the prototype here is part of this object uh, is part of this function object and after all in JavaScript everything is an object by looking at this the class keyword what allows is to uh, say we are ashamed of our prototype nature which is something that we're going to talk uh, we're ashamed of this prototype nature and we would like to write code that look like object programming okay so that look like this that so instead of actually us defining is where is going to be the data or where is going uh, yeah where is going to be the data and where you need to create a link here uh, it actually going to help us to do that all right like score so we want our yeah, so we want is our objects look like this okay so we want our object look like this so what we define is the increment okay uh, we want that our object look like this the score in um, <clears throat> the login So this dot uh, here we're gonna just console log is this response here that we get here. Why not? Come on. Is this one? So now we want to our code look like this, but behind the scenes is using is a prototype inheritance to actually allow us to do that so before going into this <clears throat> okay uh, before going into this we need to know is a couple of things of how now the prototype nature works what is in how the prototype uh, yeah how the prototype uh, nature works by default especially when you are using building objects like arrays or uh, yeah building objects like array or uh, functions so what you're doing is reducing is this previous work Sorry.
So yeah, what you're doing is just reusing the previous work of this. That's right. So what we're doing is to reduce the expensive work, computational work, like that. Um, exactly. So what we're doing is just reusing its existing uh, work, which allow us is to, for example, in the case of arrays, here, when you define it as now a building, when you use a building object like an array, and the way to create an array is by using the arrow function constructor, <coughs> the, the function constructor or the literal, okay? So now this array building object allow us is to not only, the, not only define is the data here, but also apply or access to the functionality that we can apply to this data. And I think this is part of the uh, starting point when you're going to develop any kind of application as a software engineer. And the way how you can have access to this data is through the Dunder Proto Dunder, which now is, the hidden, is a hidden property that on the spec they call that prototype. It's quite a confusing name, but we're gonna call this Dunder Proto Dunder because that's what the name of the dev tool actually use. That allow us to access to this uh, functionality here. Like add and concat and construction and copy. So all of this functionality that we can apply to this. Why this is important? Because now when you have this mind mental model here, okay, we can now uh, understand how subclassing is working behind the scenes. All right, as a way to reuse previous work in our code base. So now this prototype here, okay, they call this now prototype as a way to say that. So this prototype now has a reference or this new OP that we create, okay, uh, that has a reference under the proto, on the dunder proto dunder, has a reference to the function prototype array construction that is in there that contains all of these methods. And inside of that prototype object, okay, it also have a reference to the, uh, uh, it also have a proto, a dunder proto dunder that has a reference to point to the function constructor, to the functions uh, built in prototype objects that contain is the methods of the functions. So for example, is where you can now have access uh, to, or in this case, it uh, I think it's nothing here there. It has a reference to the object, I mean exactly, to the object, not the function, that's right. To the object, okay. Uh, where now that object prototype point, where now that object prototype a property points is to no. Where now that prototype property under the prototype objects points to no. This is the way of how you can have access to functionalities here. Okay. And I think this is something beautiful. For example, you can say, um, let's say, it's going to iterate through this array because it's going to do this uh, and I want you to now do something like this uh, for each one of those elements okay so for each one of those elements uh, we're going to pass this a callback all right 
for each of one of those elements, we want to pass is a callback here. Yep. That will contain is the value. Okay. We want to pass is a callback here that allow us is to uh, check something. Value. Since this since the value is a number, okay. Since the value is a number, uh, we can now check is this is uh, we can now check is this. Um, exactly has own property it'll tell you false but as you can see look at this you can now have access to the object property that's one of the beautiful thing of how you can actually access to property and methods for that you know hey it's prototype of property is enumerable to local stream to stream value of all right so also you can say hey is property of no is prototype prototype of uh, and then you say a number for example it's a prototype of a new number prototype of is a prototype of number right that value so the, the idea here is that you can now is yeah damn it. the idea here is that you can now use is this property and methods from through the prototype change so once you understand this, now we can actually take a look at first how the uh, yeah how the subclass w uh, with the sophisticated way of creating objects and that is the uh, object that creates is made of. Okay, we can also look at how now we actually create is. Uh, or subclassing objects with the new keyword and now how the class and extend actually is allowing us to create those objects uh, for us allow us to subclassing objects so we're gonna make a quick recap that especially with the object of create I'm not gonna dive too much into that because quite frankly that's not too much relevant right now okay so the way of how we can create now is a subclass is by defining is a let's say we're going to define is a new pay user okay to cover is a specific business use case so when you define that all right uh and yeah once you define that uh the idea here is that you're gonna call inside of that function uh, your new object in this case the user creator creator that is going to give you this uh, new user but the proto or the dunder proto dunder let's going to call this proto for sure so the proto we're going to point that to their relevant functionality which is great but this new object that we're creating this pay new user must point is to our own functionality 
okay? And it's in, those, in, their, in that functionality, in the current functionality of this uh, subclass, is where we're going to point that to the functionality to the base class. In other words, we're doing is this, right? We are doing is this. So we are creating is now the new objects whose proto points to the relevant base class functionality. We need to actually now set this new object that we're creating to point is to our relevant functionality using the building object dot set that prototype off. We can also use is the object dot prototype as a way proto as a way to set that but now the language provides this convenient feature as a way to say, hey, the proto of this target object, forget about it. Give me now uh, this. So the, here is what I'm going to uh, point to. Okay, you can have access now to this. All right. And then we are in the proper properties uh, or the relevant property to this new pay user. Okay. And we return that. So when we now want to actually create the link, all right, using the op.create, we say, all right, the functionality for our user pay functions, okay, we're going now is to uh, I think there's something missing here. Do, 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 do. Mm. Yeah, there is something missing here. Because you need oh, declaration, of course. Hey, you're logging here. And then you got it. Okay. <clears throat> exactly. So this is how you can create is uh, this reference, you know. Exactly, but pay user one login is not a function, which means that you now need to uh, say, hey, obvious.set prototype, and I want you to set the prototype of the pay user functions to the user function, which means is this as it is. So now you are setting is the proto of the current functionality from this new, from this subclass to point to the functionality of the base class. This way now is how you can access to the property and methods for that. So now when we actually run as this, we actually have access to the proper property and methods. So this is the sophisticated approach, again, as a way to understand how we, how we make things before. And now, okay, how by using is the new keyword, we do uh, this subclass. I'm just going to do this, refresh the page, and see, we can see is, well, how can we create is this new object without any problem. But when it comes to actually creating is a subclass, here's when now you have this finicky thing that is going on behind the scenes. And that is, when you are going to create your subclass, instead of actually creating a new object, because after, at the end of the day, the new keyword, what is doing is to set the value of this as an empty object that allows you to add all of the property, as well as set the Pro, the dunder proto dunder to 
the functions uh, prototype uh, property that contains all of the methods that you're going to apply to your data okay and then it's going then it's going to return you a new object so instead of doing that because after all uh, we, we 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 need to work is with the, this value especially if you're creating is with the new keyword object so we're going to now is call that function pass the value of this to the base class the base class is going to uh, create is or is going to update is the new object reference with the this okay we're gonna get that as a side effect we're never are creating is a new user okay uh, and then we're going now is to add is the proper data for this subclass we're just seeing our balance here and i think this is kind of the finicky aspect of this that feels like a hack uh, but this is now how you can perform is a side effect on that again as a way to now have access to the property methods to the uh, specifically to the methods of a base class so far so good right no problem there and not only that we need to actually is update the reference so first by now updating is the proto that will contain is now the reference to uh, or base or, or subclass functionality as well as a base class functionality first we uh, override that with the base class functionality and then we define is uh, with the uh, current functionality this is more like uh, as a way to make sense of what we're doing here you know so now we're updating that reference as a way to say hey this subclass can implement is also or can have access to the base class prototype their functionalities and now then we define is all of our uh, current functionality for this subclass so, so far so good it's like good great awesome <laughs> completely totally 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 so now that we get this uh, this particular way of subclassing with the new keyword all right it is time sorry yeah uh, it is time for us to now look at how the class and extend keyword uh, works behind the scenes so it might you can feel like it is doing something new by using this uh, this new syntax of creating class okay so for example like this but at the end of the day what is doing behind the scenes is using as a prototype uh, nature of JavaScript as a way to create objects, okay, and attach their data and a recurring functionality under and a recurring yeah functionality under the prototype, okay, and that makes a lot of sense totally. But now here we're capable to do that in one single bundle. But you need to understand how this bundle is working behind the scenes and again how do we get here how do we get here so right. good good totally 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 and now that we look at this particular way of creating class that when you have this class it's a special type of functions they are not hoisted all right so you take a look at here uh, class 
uh, no class here which is a special type of functions okay uh, you can have is class expressions in class declarations and they are not hosted okay however unlike functions declarations class declarations have the same temporal that that some restrictions as let or cons and behave if they are not hosted all right and restrictions are lets and cons so if you take a look at now the complete here javascript guide the uh, introduction in grammar types for example here in grammar types mm, grammar types exactly declare is a variable optionally initially to a value uh, let's and cons it declares a block scope local variable optionally initialize into a value declare a block scope read only name constant uh, and you use variable as symbolic names like it is this is when it's actually describing is what is the subtle difference between let and cons okay cons is for read only you can assign is a variable especially you can add new objects or you can properties if this is an object but you can reassign them okay you can reassign them uh, unlike let exactly let declarations add scope to block as well as functions let declaration can only be accessed after a place of declaration is reached for this reason let declaration are commonly regardless as non-hosted let declarations do not create properties on global this let declaration cannot be redeclared exactly by any other declaration in the same scope as a way to actually make so let and cons why am I mention this? <laughs> you may wonder. Uh, well, because it's part of the way of now how we're going to create class. Like how can we now reserve space in memory for class using cons or identifiers, using variables, in this case, let and cons. Cons as a way to, hey, read only, read only, read only. Uh, and let you say, hey, you can uh reassign new values but if we encounter any uh let with the same name mm -mm, we're not so the whole point of this is to guarantee is more consistency uh when you're writing is your code because with var uh do the dynamic nature okay var declare function scope or globally scope variables optionally initially each of the value and that's something important to understand as a way to move on here because the whole a and they are also hosted so you can define that whatever it is but at the end of the day um, understand how these basic building blocks works for example like grammar types okay and how you can use the grammar types as a way to now assign is classes all right so variable scope uh, global scope model scope and function scope okay this is now the variable scope exactly uh, in addition variables declare with let or counts can belong to an additional scope block scope right this is also talking about is the block scope you can have the global scope model and function scope but now with let allow you is to define them in block scope okay so is they are not hosted and let can be reassigned as value uh, but you can redeclare the variable where now with counts you can they are on read only they are read only of course you can now 
add more property to a cons, okay? Uh, but you are not reassigning the value. So this is now variable hosting and how that works, okay? Uh, because this is now uh, x is undefined and say is true. But not it is value assignment. Var and comes a log here, x local variable. So for example, here is a undefined, and then you assign a value for that. But again, that exists. But again, that exists because of hosting. All var statement in a function should be placed as near at the top of the function as possible. The best practice increase the clarity of the code, where let and counts are hosted in a matter of the definition debate. Referencing the variable in the blocks before the variable declaration always result in reference error. Exactly. It's like, hey, you don't exist. <laughs> you don't exist because the variable is in a temporal dead zone from the start of the blog until the declaration is processed. I want to call this temporal dead zone. <laughs> and the temporal dead zone is like, you define me, but you haven't assigned me any value. So I have, it's like, you have the space, but there is nothing in there, you know? Uh, Again, it's like um, you got a uh, you got a parking lot. You don't have any car, or motorcycle, or vehicle to put in there, but you just have that. Uh, you have a fridge, okay? Do you ha you have a fridge, okay? But you don't have anything in that fridge, right? You don't have any food in there. You know, this is how you can explain the temporal dead sun like that because after all variables are space that you reserve in memory all right um with that all right uh, and then describing is also that structure that are types okay uh, and how now it's working with the type coercion uh, yep french rose colombian kona Um, all right. There you got it. There you got it. Cool. Cool. All right. Um, yes, we we're talking about his class da, 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 and how can we assign class and also is the class body. And just as a way to recap and to, re and to remember that at the end of the day, classes are special functions and functions are special type of objects okay you can take a look at the ECMAS, uh, ECMA definition as a way to have more deep uh, knowledge of what's going on or you can also uh, take a look at a, a very interesting blog called duality here where you can see is what is the next uh, things uh, shout out to Axel Rush Mayer, Jesus, man, shut up, you man, completely, man. Mm, mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm, Jesus, bro, Jesus, completely, man. It's like completely. Mm hmm. All right. Completely. Do you have um, exactly? And, and this is interesting. And I'm going to specialize myself in JavaScript and TypeScript. Mm -hmm. 1995. God damn. At a German internet startup that later expanded internationally. In 2006, I held my first talk on Ajax. 
In 2010, I received a PhD in informatics uh, from the University of Munich. Since 2011, I have been blogging mm -hmm, at Duality, and reading several books on JavaScript and TypeScript, and also holds a whole talks and training about web development. I live in Munich, Germany. I speak German, English, French, and Spanish. God damn. <laughs> I speak Spanish, uh, English. My pronouns is him and him. Web development. I'm published the following research about this blog, Mastodon, interesting newsletter, JavaScript as a language and related tooling. Okay, my books in here light bulbs, non tech content. There are many ideas and projects that make me hopeful of the future to change you. My interest beside human language, German, English, French, Spanish, Dutch, Mandarin. Oh my God. <laughs> Sustainability, the growth, perma permaculture, urbanism, tiny house, education, psychology, getting out, getting out one's head, center, heart center living, minimalistic spiritual school, advi Advaita, da, what the hell? Taoism, Buddhist, Christian mysticism, Jiddu Krishna Murti. All right. <laughs> okay. That's yeah, 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 yeah. I think they're doing that with WordPress or just plain dames and plain Redux. God damn, bro. <laughs> God damn, bro. <laughs> Holy mo- All right. Good, man. Nigga. Um, and Cloudflare and Carbon Ads. Pretty simple, bro, you know? Simple. 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 That's quite interesting. It's pretty simple, bro. Pretty simple. Pretty, 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 pretty simple, bro. Holy moly, bro. I'm gonna buy your books and your exercise, bro. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Test driven exercise. But this is a solution. No, this is not a solution. This is the exercise, exactly. Mm -hmm. Control flow. Implementing a right to stream WMGS so that it passed the test. Exercise. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Exception handling. Template literal. Values. But this is our basics. Mm 
Yeah, this is our basic exercise, exactly. This is our basic exercise. Why well, you open this with this? With Xcode. If you own a print version of the board, you can get package exercise for night. Okay. They're gonna keep track of everything, man. And they're gonna keep track of everything in this because this man. Mm -hmm. Holy moly. Lord. All right, uh, so yeah, okay. So that's one of the reasons what, mm -hmm, hmm, Okay, okay, all right, okay. Again, 
The goal of this of today's video is to now finally see how can we subclass objects in JavaScript as a way to reuse some previous works that you or someone else actually have done in let's say another college and especially useful if you are in an industry like finance the financial sectors or the e-commerce and especially good at that because most of the time you will never end up touching those main objects those scope bases what you're going to do is perhaps following is the solid principle you're going to create a new object or a new subclass okay that follow is a single responsibility solid uh, that is open to uh, open to extensions close to modifications that also follow is the list of substitution principle which is this subclass should replace is the base class so it must be interchangeable that uh, we also have is the inverse dependency as a way to say uh, or interface segregation is like it is much more easy for an object to define its interface to cover certain use cases right uh, instead of actually having to pull this entire object there so define certain interface a good example of interface is like uh, well, uh, in your, uh, yeah, a good, a good example of uh, is like um, electric blocks, you know, an electric, in electric blocks, you are defining is a specific interface to that. Tesla has a new specific uh, interface to that. Even when you go to your house, you have a specific uh, uh interface you know but you can define this specific interface to that that you can interact with uh, and last but not least is the um, solid solid is a dependency inversion instead of actually pulling is lower level models uh, to work with high-level models creates an abstraction that doesn't depend on implementation. So you can have access to this uh, abstraction in order to work with low-level language, in order to work with low-level lower-level models. But you, you will never fit or import lower-level models in your applications. So following this particular uh, approach is something that is guide you to become now a much better uh, developer especially or a computer science or computer engineering okay as a way to build things uh, and yeah that's pretty much like like this all right so how can we now create our subclass you may ask uh, and how now that actually works well by defining is a class, which is a special type of object, is a special function object that is not hoisted, okay, and it has a in this in its body is characterized by this. This is now paid user creator object, where their body is characterized by uh, three things: their location. Uh, I mean the the kind whether it's a getter a setter a public uh, or methods or a field uh, or it can be by the location this is a static this is on the building objects or it is per instance it will leave anytime you create a new instance uh, in visibility public or private so with now this mental model here, we can now is create our data and it is functionality. And the way to do that is by defining is a constructor here, 
where in the case of JavaScript is this function constructor, okay, that we use on the prototypal nature, it receives the argument that we want to initialize this object, like score, that kind of thing, okay, uh, and, all right, pay user construction name and score, and because the way how this work, uh, or the way now in JavaScript build objects using the class is, pretty, is uh, using the prototype change or using the prototypal nature, and that is using the this keyword as to create a new object uh, initially by using is this. So this is now referencing to the newly object created, okay? And you define is your data here, your fields, like name, that kind of thing, and then did this the what did dot score here as it is and now here on the body you're going to define is your methods so this is where we, that behind the scenes the new keyword when it saw a class when you are building as an object with a class it say all right now let me add this functionality or this method like the increment okay uh, in this case increment balance like the um, sorry <coughs> sorry here because it's balance here uh, and because here we're going to create this, this new object that it'll extend or that we need to have access to the base class to the property and methods to the base class by saying user creator okay <clears throat> now we can do something like this So because when we run this, when we use the extend keyword, it's doing a couple things for us. First, it's setting the prototype of this pay user creator functions. Okay, it's set of the prototype of the pay user creator that points to the user creator class, all right? Prototype. Okay, and it also now when we're using is the super keyword, uh, it allows us to run the function constructor of the base class as a way to generate is the objects there, and then it's going to assign that to the this object that we're going to create in the base class, and that's to me quite interesting. Uh, because when you say name and score, which is the object that you want to build here, this is pretty much like a super is saying, hey, this will be here. So how do you know that? So for example, when we ask the duality here about super, or I mean, duality here about super a closer look at the super reference exactly extending constructor a closer look at super referencing okay super reference to understand how employee prototype describe invoke it is super method let's take a look at the structure of the instance jane so this is now the instance we are creating is uh from uh, the instance gen okay new employee all right as you can see uh, this is the m the employee where we are calling is look at this <laughs> this side effect okay we're calling is the person but the person is the base class constructor okay and we now pass the values this we receive that as a side effect uh, and 
we get now the data here. And what we're doing here is to say, hey, uh, employee.prototype.describe, okay, this is a functionality that you want to do. Okay, you say, hey, return the prototype dot describe dot call, which means that I want you to now, okay, call to the base functionality, like the describe here, of the super functionality, pass the value of this, followed by uh, this parameter here, which is uh, here and the this dot title. All right. So when you say, hey, new employee, gen and CTO, and then it is titled, okay? And then you want to have access to the describe gen, you can have. All right. So because this is something that we are quite familiar with, we create this uh, new object here that has is a prototype or the thunder, proto thunder points to the, uh, functions okay it points to the uh, function constructor where now this function object constructor has a shape okay or the functionality here uh, now it's pointing to that particular uh, property here which is from the employee okay and now the employee itself is now running a function that is above the be of the supper class all right so the supper is an abbreviation of the supper dot describe supper like this although they look like similar super and this are independent feature super means i'm currently in a method find the method that the method has override and apply to the same instance that is pre presently active. It has this state the same. This state in the same in need in the example. Otherwise, the descri overridden describe wouldn't be able to access to dot this. Uh, hence, this is, an about, this is about the instance one is currently modifying. While well, super is about finding and overriding methods in the prototype change. Finding the finding an override method in the prototype change. Mm, finding the pro okay, finding the is about finding an override or an overriding method. Okay, in the prototype change. G over right X just mean G is found before X in the prototype change. Okay, so this is the way of how you can now uh, found methods using the supper. Found methods along the prototype change. Okay, let's put the above intuition description into an algorithm. To make the super call, super dot describe the following step. The question, is this actually work on the simulator, the super static? But it doesn't tell you now on the class here. What is this? Mm -mm -mm -mm. And extending rules for extending don't extend class foo extend null extend a constructor extend a non constructor mutability and property attributes okay object initializer super reference
Okay. Um, mm -mm -mm. Well, uh, let's go with the yeah. Let's go with the course. Let's go with the course. Let's go with the course. All right. Give me a second here. All right, and we're back. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. We are now able it to use the work we did earlier of assigning properties in user creator to use that to help create the object with the right properties on it. Now remember we did that earlier? We uh, used user create. All right. So now let's take a look at here. Uh, and we're going to define as a class here. Yep, the subclass would extend. Peter, with Paul, and then we assign. Now the assign favorite two valid. We'll see. Two. Second. But that means there's one other thing that extends does. I can't. I'm not sure if you can tell this. Okay, it does this. <sighs> it does this. It does this. It sets paid user creator the function. It's proto. To, to the user creator function object combo. To user creator. Let me just extend this down a bit here. 
access to. No, 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 please, please, don't all laugh at once at my head. Anything that a function has access to will be. This is the moment we go, uh-huh, <laughs> and just give up. But it links up to user creator. We're going to see what this is going to let us do, people, is that when we run paid user creator, the function, it's going to create us an object inside. We're going to call super, and that super is going to go, huh, what, what am I? What is, what is my, so what, is, what, what do I need to go and run? It's going to go look at proto, see user creator, and go and run it, create our object. Promise we'll come to a second, Seth. I want to dive into this piece. I'm kind of extend on this piece a little bit. So if you left off constructor on page or creator, it's going to look in proto for constructor and just, just run constructor directly. That's a different piece a little bit. So if you left off constructor on page or creator, it's... If you left off... It's going to look in proto for constructor and just, just run constructor directly. Piece. Okay. I'm, I'm kind of want to extend on this piece a little bit. So if you left off constructor on page or creator, it's going to look in proto for constructor and just, just run constructor directly. That's a different factor. If you leave off constructor, it's going to automatically put in a very simple constructor which returns an object. So look, oh my god, look at what our sub, our, they call this a subclass, right? It's a, you know, a, not a base class, but a subclass. Look at what it has on it. Was that just from, that was just from, and everything in red was added by extends. One portion ensures that the objects that come out of running this function have access to these functions. That's what the proto, the proto bit on the function collection of functions ensures. The other portion, the other consequence of extends, ensures that the super, which when we run page user creator, we're going mm. to run, makes us go and run user creator to make the object there. And that is stored, or that link is stored in the proto. That is where it's stored. If you overwrite proto, then the super goes, ah, I'm not, I'm not there anymore. So that's quite, that's quite interesting. Let's going to do this. Let's going to do this. So this super, this, uh, in this case, okay. So what it's saying is doing is to set the prototype of the subclass pay user crea uh, creator so what extend is doing is set the subclass set the subclass prototype set the subclass prototype property because after all class has a special type of up as a special functions and the functions has the shape of the uh, has this object. Uh, it is the object that contains is the constructor uh, as well as the proto reference. And it also it is this an object because after all everything in JavaScript is an object. It's an object that okay <laughs> okay let's 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 look at this. Let's look at this. Exactly. The function objects provide methods for that. And it has the prototype. You know? The prototype property, the prototype data property of the function instance is used when the function is used as a function construction with a new operator. It becomes the new object prototype. So this function contains is a prototype by default. But because this, after all, is an object, okay? It also has this proto reference. Because at the end of the day, all has this proto reference deprecated. This feature is no longer recommended. Changing the prototype of an object is by nature how modern JavaScript engine optimize property access. The use of proto is controversial and discouraged. It is existing and exalt behavior has been standardized as a legacy feature to ensure web compatibility. Well, in the presser, 
Well, it presents several security issues and fought foot guns. <laughs> Jesus. For better support, prefer to the object of get prototype. Uh, reflect get prototype, object set prototype, and reflects a prototype uh, of instead. The proto access or property of an object instance expose the prototype, which is the uh, the way of how you can have access to this. Either an object or null. The proto property can be also used in an object literal definition to set up the object prototype. Again, 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 remember that at the end of the day, uh, everything here in JavaScript is an object, okay? And when you create an object, okay, uh, you have is uh, this hidden property called Dunder Proto Dunder, aka the prototype. And because functions are special type of objects, okay, it now has is this function it, it how it has this proto uh dunder proto dunder reference okay uh as well as the object portion which is with the prototype okay like this this is the standard building object here okay so object and object function So, as you can see, it's quite indistinguished. <laughs> you know, you click here on object and give you to the object. You click here on the object of function and it will give you to that. Uh, but after all, in JavaScript, everything is an object. And because of that, now you have this, uh, yeah, and because of that, all right, and because of that, now you have is this uh, shape. You have is this internal methods. You have now is the internal methods and uh, the internal method and defin. Uh, you have now is the internal properties and methods. Okay, so. Why this is important as a way to recap this? Because what it's doing here, okay, and it's going to be the most precise as much as possible. So when you run in the class here with extend keyword, this, what it's doing is first, look at the subclass function prototype property and set the proto to points to the base class prototype that contains the functionality, okay? And also, it's going to now point, it's going to update or set the proto of the class, because after all, class are a special type of functions and functions are a special type uh, of object, okay? that this shape of the function is that is an object that inside of that has a prototype okay and remember all objects has this hidden property the dunder proto dunder as a way to have access to all of these property and methods as a way to reuse uh, previous works for some smart people or not that smart but in any case so the other thing that is doing is to set the pro is to set the proto of the base of the subclass to points to the function constructor base class as a way to invocate that as a way to allow now the super to invocate that mm -hmm. Jesus freaking Christ. When you call super inside of that, because it is absolutely heading to proto and going to look up here. So if you overwrite this with null, yeah, super ain't going to do anything. OK. Let's see it play out. This is a lot of laying out. We're going to see it play out, and that should become a little bit clearer. All right. Left-hand side here, Chris, 
what are we doing? We set up our whole paid user class with it as an extension of user creator. Now we're going to declare what? A constant of paid user. Yeah. Perfect of paid. So now that we define is this. So we just say, hey, balance here as it is. Um, and here, let's go to define is now this dot balance equal to whatever balance we receive here. Okay. And once we did this, all right, we want now is to look at the paid user creator, okay, object, which is an special function object class that it contains is now the object portion of the prototype here where he is going to, where you're going to have is the functionality like increment balance increment balance and construction all right and also the current the current class object okay which which since this is an object it also points is to the uh, base class So it points to the base class here. You know what I mean? That's pretty fucked up. <laughs> and that's quite interesting here as a way to look at what is doing the extend keyword behind the scenes. Oh, all right. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Makes sense. Totally. Completely. Mm hmm. All right. So if you override, for example, is the paid user create. So let's say let's go to create now a user, right? Say hey, uh, pay user one. You say hey, I want to use the new keyword to build this object using a class with the class keyword pay user creator. You're gonna pass is the Alice. And the score of seven, the balance of eleven, right? So we now get our object being created. Okay. But what if we say, for example, pay uh, pay user creator? Okay, and I want to now override is the prototype. No. Say hey, the proto the prototype. I can do this, okay? But an alternative is to say, all right, let's go now, let's now go into set, use the object, yeah, use the object dot, object dot set pro, prototype of this object, special type of function, this class, okay, and points that to an empty object, all right. So by doing this, the next time we want is to actually create is an object here. Say cons pay user two using the new keyword to create this object using the class, using the new and the class keyword to build a new object, which is pay user it is uh, pay user creator when you say his Bob with 9 and 23 it say hey I cannot do that because super is now looking okay because now uh, the keyword super is not a constructor. So the keyword that holds a reference to the function constructor and the, and the way that it holds that reference is by looking is at the current, at the subclass uh, object proto, uh, proto that holds a reference to that is say, uh, no, no, what was wrong? <laughs> no, no, no. But again, Again, pay user here, 
the user creator, okay, uh, it has now under the prototype their current functionality, which is increment balance, okay. The current function is on the increment balance here. But the current object here, or at least when we set that, but the current object is pointing to now a an object and not to the base class. You know, that's quite interesting. So now as a way to set this to the proper function constructor, we say, hey, um, point to the user creator class. So by doing that, now when we create a new user, um, of course, of course, of course, we say, all right, we create that and the pay user three will contain is the relevant data. That's quite interesting. Holy moly, bro. Holy moly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what we're gonna do here, and I think this is quite compelling to write it down, you know. Quite compelling to write it down. Okay, okay. Yep, 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 yep. Totally. So um where we are we're going to define a class which is a special type of function okay aka an object that's quite interesting okay an object we define we're going to define a class which is a special type of object called pay user creator okay the extend okay the ex the extend keyword is doing two things setting the proto setting the prototype yeah setting setting the proto yeah setting the proto setting the dunder proto dunder of the prototype subclass all right and then yeah set set the prototype and then set the proto of the subclass to the base class to the base class yeah to the base class function constructor okay totally man. all right okay enabling the super to run Enable the super, enable the super to run, exactly. Enabling the super, yeah, that's right. Enabling the super to run, yep. So enabling the super, okay. Mm -hmm. Enabling the super to run the base class uh, or enable the super to run the base object, the base class object to run and generate the base class object. That's quite interesting. <laughs> that's quite interesting totally
So look at the diagram. And diagrams are freaking important. User one, user class with it as an extension of user creator. Now we're going to declare what? A constant of paid user. Yeah. Perfect of paid user one. User one. Which we don't initialize or anything yet. While we go off and call paid. out, that should become a little bit clearer. Creator, now we're going to declare clearer. All right. Left hand side here, Chris, what are we doing? We set up our whole paid user class with it as an extension of user creator. Now we're going to declare what? A constant of paid user. Yeah. Perfect Ooh. of paid user one. User one. Which we don't initialize or anything yet. While we go off and call paid user creator. Paid user creator. Look at the bottom. Are you ready for this? I'm ready for this. This is our final code, folk. Paid user one. It's actually getting dark. This is a very bad sign. Okay. And we test we, This is our final code. We're like down to our final, final, final code. This is our final execution concept we're going to do tonight. Sorry. Let's just let's pretend today. All right. Paid user one. Let's pretend for ourselves it is still today. Called with that mutative, that powerful new keyword, call paid user creator, pass in Alyssa. 8 and 25. OK, here it goes. Big execution context. There it is. Into it we go. And the first thing, have I done enough room there? Hold up. The first thing in local memory are our argument parameter combos. Let's have Michael help us out with those. We're calling pages creator. That means we run the paid user creator function, which happens to now be called constructor as part of a class, but it is just the function here. And that says we're accepting paid name, paid score account balance. So talk me through the parameter argument matching here. Beautiful. Yeah. 25. OK. And that, well done, Michael. Thank you, man. And now we're calling it with a new keyword. Nick, this is your specialty area. What does this get us doing? Oh. I can't help you out. I'm afraid it's not your specialty area this time because now in a class it does do something weird. So there is a this assignment, but it is uninitialized. Nothing there, okay? And we immediately must have a super call before we want to refer to that this. It is there, it's uninitialized, but we cannot refer to it. It's not undefined. We can't go console log above the super, which is hopefully going to go and call the user creator to create our underlying object. We are not going to run user creator and have it indirect, sorry, have a side effect on the this we create with the new keyword here. No, this fundamentally changes the class structure, how and where our pertinent object, the one we're creating, that will eventually be stored in pages one, is actually being born. It is not being born in pages creator. It is actually going to be born in user creator. And that is a design decision of the JavaScript team to make it be born in pages creator. Sorry, sorry, to make it be born in user creator constructor function. It is born in there. And then it is automatically returned out and assigned to the this out here. Versus, remember in the previous version, we had side effects on the object we created here. OK, so let's start doing this. So we're going to call, so it's unassigned right now, or uninitialized right now. We call super with what arguments? Uh, OK. We call, in this case, here, OK, we call, well, I come on for it. Why do you think you're funny? Enough.
<clears throat> and initially what is going to do is set um, define a this mm -hmm. define a this value as undefined uh, Chris paid name which is and paint score. Which have what values? Uh, Alyssa and eight. eight. And they're going to go into as what parameter argument combos in the constructor? Name and score. Name is going to be Alyssa, score is going to be eight inside the execution context. Okay. Create the execution context. I'm actually going to do this. Name is going to. Call the super at the constructor. Okay. Call the super at the constructor. Mm -hmm. Call the super at the constructor. of the base of the base class constructor okay call the super of the base class constructor define this as undefined be a lissa score is going to be eight inside execution context okay create the execution context i'm actually going to do this this equals, I just want to say pseudo equals, you can't assign to this, but behind the scenes is what's happening. This is going to equal the return value of calling super. Now, I'm going to actually show you briefly what actually happens. It does this. There's a new thing in JavaScript that allows you to call a, a constructor function, that's a function that should have a new keyword in front of it, that uh, allows you to do it without the new keyword. It's called like reflect.construct. Mm -hmm. So there is now, so there is, there is now call the super base class constructor, creating an, an execution function, creating an execution, creating a function execution context a function execution context as it is. Can someone type that into Google? I think it's called, Mark, do you mind just typing reflect.construct? It's in MDN. Reflect.construct. So I'm actually going to show you what this exactly does behind the scenes. Um, I'm going to do it in red because it really is about the extends that makes this happen. Okay? So it's going to be reflect. Does it say reflect.construct exists? Yeah. Reflect.construct. Okay? Its first argument is the function that's going to be creating the object. But what is the function that's going to be creating the object? It is... The object that is going to be creating the object... User creator. User creator. Because it goes to look for proto and it's user creator. This is just what it's doing behind the scenes. User creator. And then the arguments... Alyssa, I promised myself not to, tell, not to do this bit, but there we go. And then... And then the object that is going to be assigned to... The function whose prototype object we want to have the returned object that comes out of the call to super point to, which is paid user creator. So paid user creator, paid user creator. But for our purposes, and then that returns out an object into 
into the this. But for our purposes, just think of it as the super. We can write it a couple of ways. Think of it as the super being. Super goes, oh no, what do I want to run to produce the object? Well, the object I want to have is the user object, but we're going to add a bunch of stuff to it. So go run the user creator constructor. How do we know to go run that? Because extends put in the proto a reference to the user creator function. Mm -hmm. Because the extend puts the reference to the user creator function. Or user creator constructor function. So super mm -hmm. goes, no, what's super? You can almost function. think of it like this, that in local memory, super is set to user creator. Not literally, but you can almost think of it as super is set to user creator. OK. So super is set to user creator, called with Alyssa, and eight, and then that's going to be stored in this. These are just three different ways of saying the same thing. Don't worry too much about this reflect.construct thing. It's just a new way of allowing us to, and behind the scenes, this is really what's happening. We're running user creator with, sorry, the new keyword in front of it. It's going to return out the object that we know well and love, but we're going to control the returned out object proto to not be to user creator prototype object, but instead to be to page user creator prototype object. OK, let's just do it. Let's not mm -hmm. So it's going to get re we're going to receive is that object that instead of pointing to the prototype base class, we're going to point that now is to the subclass prototype. No, well, I, regret, I regret bringing that reflect.construct thing, but just know that what we pass in last there means that this running of super user creator is going to set the prototype to be paid user creator dot prototype. What we pass in last there means that this running of super user creator is going to set the prototype to be paid user creator dot prototype, not user creator. So all right, um, call the super of the base class creating a function execution context, OK? Uh, and you can imagine, imagine that it is like using a reflect object, the reflect object that allowed you is to trigger or, or that, yeah, that allowed you to uh, trigger intersectable JavaScript internal methods. So for example, uh, JavaScript internal method, JavaScript object internal methods. So for example, construction, construct, reflect.construct. Mm -hmm. It tells you, hey, reflect.construct is like the new operator, but as a function. It's equivalent to call the new to oh, okay because of all the new keyword is like an EQ exact it's like the new operator put as a function. It's equivalent to calling the new target here, the new function here. But instead of doing that, you say hey reflect that construct that. Say hey, I want you to now is uh Okay, it's like the new operator. Okay, allow you to now is set the value of, set the, this value of this function as an empty object, pass all of this property, and then construct this object for me. Target argument list, and then the value of the new target operator, which is usually specified the prototype. Uh, okay. This is what you specify is the prototype of the returning object. Hey, this object that you're going to get, I don't want it to, I just want to update, I just want to set the proto to points to my current base class. Reflect the construct, invoke the constructor of the internal object method. And if that foo has a constructor, whether it's a function, it's a constructor internal object, whether it's a function or a class, okay, or any object that has a construct property, which is functions, 
Okay, use reflect construct for that. Say, so, hey, I want you to know on this date object, which are their parameters, I want you to get a new object here, which is a new date instance here, and like it is. Using reflect.construct. This is like running the new keyword on that, but you modify is the prototype. Mm -hmm. An arbitrary combination of constructor and prototype using dot create. Exactly. However, while the end result is the same, there is, any, there is one important difference in the process. When using object.create and function prototype.apply, the new target operator will point to the undefined within the function used as a constructor. Since the new keyword is not being able to use, uh, is not being used to create an object, in fact, it used apply semantic, not construct, Okay, it use apply semantic, not construct. Although normal function happens to operate nearly the same. When invoking reflect.construct, on the other hand, the new target operator will point to the new target parameter if supply or target if not. Exactly. Logs function one class. Function one class, reflect the construct, it's a one class, and the function other class as a way to set the prototype, the proto of that, the prototype of that. Mm -hmm. And the reflect method has a lot of time in the, in the making, in the while. Uh, yeah. You quite a lot of time here to reflect. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. The reflect object the construct which which allows to intercept which allows to intercept which allow is to call which allows is to call intercept interceptable JavaScript objects internal method in construct allow us to define allow us to uh, like new keyword define yeah, like new keyword, create an object, but we can modify is, we can modify it is, we can modify it is current, yeah, we can modify Yeah, we can modify. Yeah, we can modify. It is current. Mm -hmm. We can modify. It is current. How do you put it? Exactly. So, but we can modify. It is current behavior. But we can modify. It is current. But we can modify. It is prototype. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Makes sense. 
Here we go. So super refers to let's go run user creator. Just like we did before. Go run user creator. Make the object, but before we used that previous work and applied it to the local object in page user creator. Now we're going to make the object inside of user creator, not inside of page user creator. And we're going to return it out into page user creator. Let's do it, and then we're done, people. So calling super, really cool user creators, constructor function. Let's have Nick. Save me, Nick. We're calling super. It's really user creator with a new keyword in front of it. Its output is going to be stored in our this in page user creator. Talk me through the execution context of user creator with a new keyword. Help me out, Nick. So the new. Keywords. Let's just do our arguments first. Arguments, okay, yeah. So our arguments are? Our arguments are name and score. Those are our parameters with the arguments. Oh, with the arguments. Alyssa yeah. and eight. Perfect. Seven. Hold on. Alyssa is our argument assigned to our parameter name and score. And then score is eight. It's the being called with a new keyword. Because super is really calling user creator, the constructor bit, with a new keyword to make the object. But note we're making it inside of here this time, not out here. OK, so let's do the new keyword stuff. Go ahead. So Nick. new creates a this, an empty this object. Beautiful. Which gets set with a proto, proto to where to where <laughs> exactly it creates a proto here uh, to the prototype pay user creator normally it would be to use the base class type this exactly. object here wouldn't it yeah. but by the nature of the class design the super sets this object's proto not to the function user creator dot prototypes object. Instead, it overrides it. And David, where does it set it to? Page user creator. Page user creator dot prototype. Fantastic. And that's what I was regretting bringing up, but sort of showing you under the hood what's happening. It says run user creator with a new keyword, pass in these arguments, and set the returned object's proto to page user creator dot prototype. That's all this. This is a new way of doing stuff in JavaScript in ES6 that allows you to manually control more of what the new keyword does. That's all it was, but we can see it, we can see it without bringing that up. But Forgive me for bringing that up. It's worth, you know, it's an interesting thing to see. There's a new way of doing this stuff. But yeah. yeah, we keyword does. That's all it was. But we can see it. We can see it without bringing that up. But forgive me for bringing that up. It's worth, you know, it's an interesting thing to see. There's a new way of doing this stuff. But yeah, we now set our proto. Remind me again, Nick, to what? But we can see it. We can see it without bringing that up. But forgive me for bringing that up. It's worth, you know, it's an interesting thing to see. There's a new way of doing this stuff. But yeah, we now set our proto. Remind me again, Nick, to what? Paid user creator. Dot prototype that object. For, yeah, exactly. Let's just draw the line through. It's a long way. No right. Okay. So in the diagram, exactly, in the diagram, when we, when we run super here, in the diagram, when we run super, it is like running the reflect constructor reflect construct that uh, instead of returning a new object that points to the base class prototype or in this case, the user creator the prototype. It overrides. It overrides. It overrides. It overrides it and points to the subclass prototype. Yeah, and points it to the subclass prototype, which is paid, paid, paid user creator. 
Can I get my line? Values of Alyssa is, is the object. It's in this object. In the this, exactly. It goes and sticks in the this. Fantastic. But folk, it was even a revelation to me. I say even, probably especially a revelation to me. That is awful, I apologize. It was a revelation to me that the construction of the object itself is happening in the user creator constructor and then getting returned out one level. OK, uh, where it out is returned with name on there. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. OK, let's just get rid of it from here. Let's just say here it was up to here. There it is. But now we can see where it actually links. Oh, no, this is getting horrible. I regret this. And now what do we add to this object, Nick? Oh, that's, uh, that was in our prototype, easy slip to make. Oh, right, right, right. Count. Account balance with what property value? 25. 25. Good. In the online audience. Anytime they can leave the room going, ah, oh, it was good. Oh, good. Next time. Like this. Time. Uh, <laughs> we grab this object. We're calling pages of creator with the new keyword. So, Nick, we've got our lovely object here. In the this, what do we do to it automatically? We return it to paid user one. To paid user one. Nick, I'm so impressed. Out it comes. There it is. Into paid user one. Where? Where? So, Nick. Good. Uh, <laughs> next time, uh, <laughs> we grab this object. We're called cool being the online audience. Anytime they can leave the room going, ah. Oh, it was good. Oh, good. <laughs> Next. And then return the new object which is created on the return and then return the new object into this uh, on the this keyword. which is created on the base class, OK, on the base class. So this is the final diagram. Molly, Molly. Time. Uh, we grab this object. We're calling page user creator with the new keyword. So, Nick, we've got our lovely object here. In the this, what do we do to it automatically? We return it to paid user one. To paid user one. Nick, I'm so impressed. Out it comes. There it is. Into paid user Makes one. Makes a lot of sense. Where? Where we find, let me just get my handwriting really neat for this final piece. Where we find name. Oh. Set, stop right. packing your stuff up. <laughs> Shh. I can literally hear the zip of your bag, Seth. Okay. And the proto is stop conveniently back, set. Back up. Exactly. Shh. Where we find name. Seth, stop packing your stuff up. Stop. Stop packing your stuff up. <laughs> stop packing your stuff up. Stop packing your stuff up. <laughs> Shh. I can literally hear the zip of your bag, Seth. Stop packing your okay. stuff up. 
and the proto is conveniently set to exactly what we want. So here we go, our final <laughs> lookups. Stop backing yourself up. I'm actually out of breath from so much excitement. Excitement. All right. I really don't know why I brought up this version, but it should show you what the new keyword is really doing in this situation. Mm -hmm. It's slightly different here. It's using is this now building up that That's allow you to use okay. some so kind of functionality, Remembering which is like what we want is a paid user one who has access the to the paid user specific functionality, but also to the user functionality. And that, that paid user one has the properties of a regular user, and we didn't have to go and redo this property assignment. We just used the constructor that made the regular user earlier. And funnily, with the class model in the new ES6 version, you do the creation of that object in user creator and then return it out to paid user creator, which seems reasonable, but it is different to how we used to do it canonically in, 20, in canonically. pre ES2015, where we built it out here and then had side effects to change it using the, the previous constructor function. Paid user one, not increased balance, let's call it Elliot. It is your moment, ma'am. Uh, we look for a paid user one. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Paid. Yeah, paid user one dot increase balance. This is, remember, the paid user specific functionality. Specific Let's functionality. go on that lookup, Elliot. We look for the increase balance increase method. Yeah. It's not there, so we find it. We wouldn't want it to be there, would method? we? Because that would mean a copy on every single object, which would be ridiculous. So where do we look? We follow the proto to uh, paid user creator prototype object, and we find it there. Beautiful. Let's see if he can do it for the other one. So, that, so where do we look? We follow the pro for the increase balance uh, method. Yeah. It's not there, so we follow We wouldn't it. want it to be there, would we? Because that me a copy on every single object, which would be ridiculous. We can have it then in a wrong way, but exactly. Where do we look? We look for the increase balance uh, method. Yeah. It's not there, so we follow. We wouldn't want it to be there, would we? Because that would mean a copy on every single object, which would be ridiculous. So where do we look? We follow the proto to uh, paid user creator prototype object, and we find it there. Beautiful. Let's see if he can do it for the other one. So that's the paid user one. And by the way, user one, if we went looking for increased balance, we wouldn't find it on user one, but nor would we find it on user creator dot prototype. So that would be, that's great, we don't want it. The regular users didn't pay. So, so we don't want them to have an increased balance. So now let's check if our paid user one, though, still gets access to our user specific user functionality. Elliot, help me out again class. on that lookup user journey. Specific uh, we look in the global memory again, paid user one. Perfect, there it is. Look for the method increase, or uh, say name. Say it's name. Not, say not name. There, so we follow we the don't proto. find so, them. Yep, so it's there. It, it's not there. So we follow the proto reference. So up. we follow the proto pro reference up proto to say, hey, do we have that now on the pay users? No, we don't find them. We don't panic. We look up on the proto change up that has a reference to the proto type portion of the base class, in our case, user creator. We look at the same, we look at that, we get the same name, and, and we run it. there, so we follow that. Do we panic? No. A little bit, but then, <laughs> a little bit. but then no more. And we follow it up to? Uh, the proto up to the user creator prototype objects. And what do we find there? We find the same name. And we can execute its code. Let's give Elliot a huge hand. Well done, man. That's it, folks. That is it. We have implemented from scratch, under the hood, solution two of... But this is the mechanism here. This is the repetitive mechanism. It's like, hey, I'm going to take a look at... This is something that is doing over and over and over and now soon. So, anytime you look up for a method, it will first look at the, uh, if that exists in the object. It doesn't exist? Okay. Uh, do we have that on the prototype? No. All right. We panic a little bit. Then we take a look at the proto that holds a reference to the object that we can have access. And we ask again the same. Do we have on the object portion? No. Does it have a prototype? Yes. All right. Do we have that method inside of the prototype? No. All right. Let me take a look now at the proto reference. Does this proto reference points to something? Yes. All right. Let's go to take a look at that and repeat that process until the proto reach to null. It's like, hey, we end. This is this is it. This is it. Final destination. Oh my God. There's no, this is it. Final destination. 
Oh my God. I'm, don't, I don't have that. I don't have that. Subclassing, and you can see it is brutal. But we have the full model of how it works, and we control every single piece of it by hand. Which I, I like this. I know exactly what I'm doing here. I know where my functions are. I'm manually setting bonds to them. No problem. Then we said new keyword. Do some of that connecting up automatically. And you know what? We end up doing some sort of weird connecting up, meaning we had to kind of use that function over there, use a creator. And we wanted to use it, but we had to kind of play with it by setting the this to be the this one layer out in page user creator so that it referred to the right object that we were making for a page user. That was a little bit of a mess. Sorry, David, go ahead. And then update proto. And then update proto. That was a little bit mess. Uh, well, we update, exactly update proto on the, um, uh, on the page user creator's set of functions so that they had a link to the user creator's set of functions, the user functions. It's a little bit, I mean, this was the emerging standard until ES 2015. And I can tell you it's a little bit, I don't know, it's a little bit almost hacky, not literally, but just it, it kind of gives you some stuff and then takes away, it gives you some stuff and too much, and you have to kind of do adjustments. Mm -hmm. I will say this is solution four, it is now fairly clean of an implementation. But under the yeah. hood, oh my God, I, don't, <laughs> I feel like I've been on one of those crazed, um, you know, you've been in a kind of zone and artistically, you look back and you're like, oh, shit, what happened here? <laughs> so solution four, it is cleaner. I mean, the code is pretty clean, but folk, to debug it effectively, we have to still know that mm -hmm. all of this is going on under the hood. Because imagine you came to Java, JavaScript from Java and you thought this was emulating Java or Python under the hood. I mean, you would just be left with a complete blank and a complete inability to go and actually uh, debug and write clean code long term. We now have, I hope, the tools under the hood to know exactly what a class is, to know exactly what Extends is doing and where it comes in with Super and where it comes in with our proto reference to our prototype object, with its proto reference to this prototype object. We know every last piece. So well done, folk. This was even more demanding than hard parts, the new hard parts. But it's pretty demanding. But I'm very, very impressed that you all followed along. So thank you so much. Thank you to our wonderful online audience. It's been a pleasure having you. If you did stick it out, and I know some of you are around the world, and it's now the new early morning in Indonesia, where I know some of you are, uh, it has been a delight to have you on as well. So thank you so much, everybody. And now we wrap. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> of an implementation. Exactly. I will say this is solution four. Is it super in this in a subclass construction? And then now uh, this is creating an object with us using super in the subclass. Using super in a subclass, in a subclass constructor. And now wrapping up. And then the conclusion. And then the con conclusion, wrapping up, wrapping up. Exactly, wrapping up. Mm -hmm. And then wrapping up. Or it is now fairly clean of an implementation. But under the hood. Mm -hmm. So now, this way of creating objects, of creating, of creating object is fairly, fairly clean, but under the hood, but under the hood is using the prototype nature of JavaScript. Why this is important, <laughs> you may wonder. Why this is important? Because now it can give you, it can give you is a better mental model to effectively 
debug your application. Oh my god, I, like, <laughs> I feel like I've been on one of those crazed, um, you know, you've been in a kind of zone and artistically you look back and you're like, oh, shit, what happened here? <laughs> so solution four, it is cleaner. I mean, the code is pretty clean, but folk, to debug it effectively, we have to still know that all of this is going on under the hood. Because imagine you came to Java, JavaScript from Java, and you thought this was emulating Java or Python under the hood. I mean, you would just be left with a complete blank and a complete inability to go and actually uh, debug and write clean code long term. We now have... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you come from a language like Python mm -hmm, or Java, And then you you need to debug a JavaScript app. You will you will be lost. You will be you will be blank and unable to effectively create apps and uh, unable to effectively create. Main, maintainable apps in theory, right? Have, I hope, the tools under the hood to know exactly what a class is, to know exactly what extends is doing and where it comes in with super and where it comes in with our proto-reference to our prototype object, with its proto-reference to this prototype object. We know every last piece. So, well done, folk. So, my hope is that you can now okay so my hope is that you can now you can now know the mental model mm -hmm, the mental you can have now the mental model of how class and x class class extend and super works behind the scenes oh, really? this was even more demanding than hard parts the new hard parts but it's pretty demanding but i'm very very impressed that you all followed along so thank you so much thank you to our wonderful online audience it's been a pleasure having you if you did stick it out and i know some of you are around the world and it's now the new early morning in indonesia where i know some of you are uh, it has been a delight to have you on as well. So thank you so much, everybody. And now we wrap. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> this was a wild ride. It was a wild, a wild ride, and a very informative to develop a mental, a mental model around how object programming in JavaScript works. Thank you, thank you. What?
so with that that'll be all for the video and that was quite well <laughs> that was a quite quite a while ride bro totally totally mm-hmm mm -hmm. yeah it is man yeah it is man holy mother <laughs> that'll be all for this video take care bye bye